Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Rick Hockey here at the Dennis Lynch Arena. Matt Farina alongside Mike Giamarco, we have the call for you tonight. So, Mike, Rick going one and one last weekend. Uh, how do you rebound from that and get, you know, two in a row for this weekend? Well, I think, first of all, a big win versus Quinnipiac really brings up the momentum, hopefully gets you motivated, and it hopefully, you know, surges you to more wins. After that loss against Eastern Connecticut State, I mean, Eastern Connecticut's a good team no matter what. You just got to put that one behind you, hopefully push forward, and it's going to be a battle here tonight, and I think Rick can take away the win. Dennis Reel's got some good game plans, so we'll see what he does. All right, thanks, Mike. And now we take it to the ice for the opening puck drop. Gets it up, but Rick is quick to hit it out. Polak with the puck, loses it back into Bridgewater's possession. Bridgewater has it back down into the corner, looking for the pass, gets it, trying to get it out of zone. And they, no, they don't yet. Tugas, great effort there. It's a three on one right now, trying to pass it over to Polak, but it is not successful. Polak passes back to Huber, back down into the corner. And still fighting for it, and the puck finally gets out of the zone. And a good first effort from the anchorman, keeping the puck in their zone before it gets hit out. And that's what they really need to do, Matt, is play the pace, play the pace of their game. I agree 100% there. Once you get playing your style of hockey, make the other team play, get uncomfortable, it works in your favor. It's going to be a good battle tonight. The girl to take the face off. Now, little... Uh, Little disagreement right there between Vickers and a Bridgewater State defender. Not exactly sure what it was about. McGraw will get kicked off and Vickers will take the face off. And Puck goes down into the corner, back up to the point. Costa with a shot off the skate of a Bridgewater defender and they couldn't get it into their offensive zone. Passes it back out. Bridgewater has it, trying to clear it, get it out of the zone. Good saucer pass right there over to a defender. Number 19 shoots it, it's just wide. Ryan Hubert in net tonight for Rhode Island College Anchorman. Great check along the boards from Vickers. And Vickers just went down right there in the middle of the ice. Ref didn't pick up on it with a little bit like uh, interference right there, but. Don't let him play. Always love to see the refs do that. Costa down into the corner with a puck. Trying to pass it out. Bridgewater gets it right in front of the net. Could not control the puck. Swings it around the boards. And it looks like Rhode Island College will get it. Costa has the puck now. Looking for a pass. Oh, a big hit right there by a Bridgewater defender. That'll get your bench energized. Costa looks a little shaken up coming up, but he looks all right. He'll go to the bench. And as you can see here, Bridgewater is bringing uh, the physical presence early this in this game, Mike. Uh, as we were just saying before, trying to play your style of hockey, it looks like Bridgewater is making Rick play a very physical style of hockey, which they are not used to. 17 minutes and 58 seconds left in the period. Score is still tied at zero. Montesanto to take the face off for the anchorman. And we got some newcomers today, Mike, uh, on the team. Number two, Nate Duffy. Number 10, 10, Eddie Francis, and number 12, Drew Quirk. I heard good things out of all three of them. And we'll see if their presence could uh, give this team a boost and try and get them into the playoffs. Another almost big hit right there. Uh, Montesanto taking the brunt of that. And Francis in there trying to defend. Montesanto trying to get the puck out, passes it right to the Bridgewater defender, and Bridgewater trying to get the puck out. And it, icing is called off. Hubert passes it along the glass. Excellent centering pass right there, but Hubert is there to shut the door. Good, good attention by Hubert, good awareness. Good job stepping in front of that shot. And Duffy there fighting for the puck. And Quirk will have the puck now. Nice little move. Quirk passes up to Francis. This is, uh, I like how they put all the new players on a new line, Mike. That's a very young line. I know a lot of them are either freshmen or very close to being freshmen. Smart move by Dennis Real. Getting kind of the youth movement of this Rhode Island College team. A couple of uh, veterans leaving the team. And after a slow start, Coach Real really did draw up a great game plan 
brought more motivation to the team, and they've sped up their play and got a couple of wins this season after a very, very slow start. And Tugas has the puck. I'll tell you what, Bridgewater's one of the most physical teams we've seen so far this season, Mike. Not even five minutes into the game, and we can tell that. Pass back up to Duffy, the other Duffy. I should, should I say the original Duffy? And the puck goes out. Huber is there with the puck, looking for a pass. Holds off on the pass to Pannone. Fires it down, and the Bridgewater State goalie loves it. And McGurl there giving the goalie a little uh, ice spray. 16 minutes and two seconds left in the period. The Bridgewater defender didn't really like what McGurl just did there. And Bridgewater State won the face off, but the puck was given up. McGurl fighting tough with a Bridgewater defender. Bridgewater gets it. Passes it back out. Maxwell is there skating, trying to hit the puck. And Bridgewater ends up getting it, but the pass is right to Costa. Pass back up to Vickers. Vickers, I don't think Vickers got a clean handle on that puck. Excellent job right there by Estrella. And it goes back into the neutral zone. Vickers trying to lay a big hit right there. And a big hit happened by McGurl, but it will be called for interference. And obviously McGurl will go to the box. Believe that'll be a two minute penalty, two minute minor, with 15 minutes and 31 seconds to go in this period. And as you can see from that play before, McGurl was already upset. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Bridgewater's vamping up the uh, physical play, and it's showing. Rhode Island College getting a little bit frustrated out there, but they can't lose their composure. It's big. Tugas with the face off, not successful. Bridgewater has it, looking for the shot right through the legs, but Hubert is there to shut the door and the puck gets cleared. And good awareness by Polak to just spray the puck up the ice. And Bridgewater calling out a play and here they come. It's a three on two right now. Rick has to get back right there. A little slow on that play. And another Rick body hitting the ice. Bridgewater State has it, excellent look, but they cannot convert. Fighting for it behind the net, Bridgewater finally gets it back up to the blue line. Skate looking for the shot off one of the Rick's defender's sticks, and Hubert is there. Great awareness by Hubert, snagging the puck out of the air. Great save by Hubert. And already the chippiness starting with six minutes into the game, not even. 14 minutes and 43 seconds to go. About one minute and 12 seconds left on this power play for Bridgewater. Haven't converted yet. Number 14 will take the face off for Bridgewater. And Medeiros was also in the face off circle. Bridgewater looking for the pass. Stops and Montesanto trying to stay with him. Passes it back out. And Rhode Island College gets it, flips it back down into the corner and that'll be a clear. Again, Good awareness. Excellent penalty kill here by Rhode Island College. Good awareness there by Huber. And Bridgewater again will have to go to the drawing board. Trying to fake him out right there is Montesanto. And Huber's chasing the puck, trying to get it out of there. Gets down into the corner, still scrumming with some Bridgewater defenders. And they fire right in front of the net, but it is no good. Bridgewater has it at the blue line, trying to get something going, trying to get a tip. And it is fired down by Trevor Medeiros. 18 seconds left on this power play. Long pass right there to Bridgewater. And Pannone has it and fires it back down. Bridgewater has it, trying to cross the center ice, flips it down into the corner. And they're still trying to get it out of the zone. Puck flips up and it's behind him, but he can't see it. Bridgewater just fires it at, at Hubert. But again, good awareness, closing the door. A great aggressive play by both teams thus far in this game. And McGurl with the shot goes right off a Bridgewater defender. McGurl hits the ice. And Duffy trying to get the puck right there. Again down into the corner. Costa fires it across the boards. And Bridgewater, bad pass right there by Bridgewater State defender right there. And Medeiros has the puck. 
has Tugas and Duffy. I, I apologize, DeLuca. And almost a great chance pass from DeLuca to I believe was trying to pass to Tugas. And Maxwell with the slap shot, it is wide to the right. DeLuca down there, passes it back up to Medeiros. Medeiros trying to get it up to the point right there, but could not get a clean handle on it. And the puck goes flying down the ice. Won't be an icing though, Hubert is there to stop the puck. And Rhode Island College on the attack right here. We have Saunders in front of the net right there but they could not convert. Bridgewater State has it, passes it back up. Good stop right there by Rhode Island College. Big hit right in front of the penalty box, but Rhode Island College ultimately ends up with it. Back down into the Bridgewater offensive zone, and no icing again. Costa right there gets hit pretty hard, and Hubert is there to shut the door again. The Hubert's freshman, looking good so far. The freshman showing a very impressive uh, start into this game, nine minutes into this game. 11 minutes and 51 seconds to go in the period. Montesanto with the faceoff. And this is that, that new line, Mike, the, uh, the third or fourth line, I believe. Coach Real wants to see what these, what these guys can bring to the team, I guess. Absolutely, right he should, right, right he is. Bridgewater State has it. Hubert is standing tough right there. Good job by Hubert. Good save right there. He came way out of the net, though. And the puck goes back down into the corner. And Duffy is there. Duffy's trying to hit it back out. Crossing the blue line into the neutral zone is Montesanto. Big hit right there against the glass. And the puck goes behind the net. Saunders is there trying to hit the puck away. Bridgewater there with the puck. And Francis trying to get the puck right there. And he Passes does. it back out in front of the net, but nobody is home. Saunders is there in front of the net, but he could not convert. Saunders now in back of the net trying to fight for the puck. Montesanto trying to get the puck. Tries to flip it over a Bridgewater defender, but it is not successful. A scrum going on there behind the net. And Bridgewater will ultimately get it. Flip it out of the zone. And number 19 has it. Good poke away right there by Hubert. Risky one, but a good one. And the young freshman showing off his skills as we take a break here. 10 minutes and 38 seconds with the stoppage of play. Wow. Both teams looking good so far. I got to say the edge has gone to Bridgewater. 60-40 in this game. Just Bridgewater's physical presence just, just Absolutely. Has giving them that extra 10%. But if Rick fixes a couple things, they're, they're going to be right in this game. McGurl will take the face off. McGurl. Ends up hitting the puck down into the corner. Scrumming again along the boards. Looks like Duffy. And they're still scrumming in the corner right there. Vickers trying to get in on the action. And Rhode Island College taps it down into the offensive zone. And we get an icing here with 10 minutes and 15 seconds left. And new strategy from offensively and defensively that we've seen. Not very familiar to do a more of a line, as you can see right now on the face-offs. Absolutely, and McGurl wins the face-off, covered up by Hubert. Hubert's looking very good so far. I'd say so, and uh, of course, longtime veteran Vinny Tadino uh, departing the team. And so that leaves uh, Pat Noak and freshman Ryan Hubert as the goalies. Sort of the future of uh, Rhode Island College goalie right here. Down into the corner, Huber is there. Trying to get the puck, but that's Vickers. Vickers trying to get it up, but Bridgewater hits it back down. And Duffy fighting for the puck right there. And they get it out of the zone. Puck will slide down. The goalie is right there to stop it, looking for a pass and just scoots it out to the side of the net. Vickers right there. Vickers got a handle on the puck. Oh, a big hit right there. Two guys hit the ice right there. Vickers goes down for a second time this game. And McGurl putting a big hit right there along the penalty box. And we will get a stoppage in play. I believe somebody lost a stick right there. Yep, somebody broke it. 
Nine minutes and 30 seconds left in the period. We're gonna see tonight's first line back on the ice. And it looks like no, Vickers. We won't. Vickers will go to the box. Vickers will go to the box. Not sure why. Might have been with the hit over there in the corner. Tripping was the call. I don't know about that. He was on the ice. Hey, at least it's not Falk tonight, Mike. At least it's not Falk. <laughs> the goalie stops it, passes it back down into the corner. Bridgewater State has it. Looking for the open man, finds one. Trying to pass it back up, loses control of the puck. And Polak is there hustling, trying to get the puck. And that'll be Duffy going down into the corner with it. Bridgewater State defender falls down. And they finally get it back up to the blue line, trying to look for an open pass. And they finally get one. Number three with the, uh, the shot. Oh, excellent job right there by Hubert. It looked like Hubert got a little piece of that. Wasn't sure. It looked like it went off the crossbar. Back up to the blue line. Looking for that open lane right there. Can't find it. Polak doing a great job right there. Shutting down the lane. And Tugas with an excellent job. And Polak is there to clear the puck. Back up into the neutral zone goes the puck. Bridgewater State trying to get something going on offense. Eight minutes and 20 seconds left. Adiris trying to stop the puck. Montesanto, good hit away, but is right back into the stick of the Bridgewater defender. And a shot up into the netting it goes. Eight minutes and nine seconds to go with 39 seconds left on the power play. And you know, that penalty kill is looking really good for Rhode Island College. I mean, obviously five on four, you gotta play that zone defense and it's working so far. And it looks like Montesanto will take the face off. But oh, I apologize, that is Medeiros and Hubert is there to stop the puck. We'll see another one. We have Maxwell Medeiros, Montesanto, and Frasca. No, I apologize, that's Costa. That's your four for the anchorman. Down behind the goal they go. Bridgewater State trying to get the puck out, but Montesanto is there and shoots it back down with 20 seconds left in the power play. Bridgewater State looking for the open man. I'll tell you what, their passing hasn't been as crisp as uh, I thought they would be tonight. Not yet, at least. they got to warm up. Puck goes flying up into the center, and it looks like, looks like Vickers will get out of the box. Trying to hit the puck out of there. But Bridgewater State buries the goal. And that'll make it one to nothing here with seven minutes and 22 seconds left in the period. Couldn't tell what number that was who got the goal, Mike. Just a great play by Bridgewater. A little chippiness going on right there in front of the net. In front of the bench, I'm sorry. Like to see a nice chippy game, Mike. Absolutely. De defensive and also physical games, always the best types of game. Going back to the days of the Broad Street Bullies down in Philadelphia. A little John Scott-esque, if you want to call it that. <laughs> Making his first appearance in the NHL All-Star game. This and hopefully weekend. not his last. I don't think it will be his last. I don't either. You know, that's a whole situation for another, another discussion. And it looks like Vadnais will get called for that trip on a delayed penalty. And 7.06 left. Rick will once again go on the penalty kill. Vadnais showing uh, a little frustration right there. And it looked like it could have been a little embellishment from Bridgewater. A little bit. A little Montreal Canadian-esque. <laughs> Badnay's clearly showing his disappointment right there. And it looks like Tugas will take the face off. Huber has the puck, fires it down the boards. Excellent stop right there by the Bridgewater defender. Fighting for the puck is Huber down into the corner. Big hit right there, and it looks like he's going to get called for interference, if I'm not mistaken. And that'll be Polak coming to the 
penalty box. So now Rick will go on a five on three. Oh, I apologize. It looks like they stopped the game because his helmet came off. Questionable call. But you know what? In the ref's judgment. Hey, you know what, though? The, with the new college rules and the concussion awareness, I can see sense. why they stopped the game. But at some point, you got to let them play hockey. Absolutely. And Bridgewater has it in their offensive zone, getting it out up into the neutral zone. It's Bridgewater. Good fake out right there. Good deep. Fires it. It is wide left of the net. And the puck goes flying back down into the offensive zone. So Rick, Bridgewater still has it. Passes it up. Goes behind the goal. Looking for a pass. Montesanto trying to defend right there. Finally finds a man. Flips it back down. Almost hits the ref skate right there. Goes behind the net. Back up to number 21 at the blue line. Fires it. Trying to get the tip in. Bridgewater State still has it. Hubert staying strong there in the net. Back up to number 21. Fires it back down into the corner. And a stoppage of play. Not sure why. You're going to get somebody on the penalty right here. We'll see what the call is. Nope, not sure why they stopped. Play Didn't right say it was there. an offside. Oh, it was an offside, really. Didn't, didn't look like the puck crossed the blue line to me. <laughs> didn't look like it from here either. No. Nope. What do we know, Mike? We're just the commentators. And the ref goes flying up into the bench. I'm sorry, the puck goes flying <laughs> up into the bench. I was just about to say these refs, Mike. A little questionable in the first period. Might need some glasses. Maybe we should call up Falk. Might be a good idea. Well, welcome to the jungle plane before uh, the face-off. No, that's one of your favorites, Mike. It's just as much my favorite as Falk is. <laughs> and the puck is taken into the offensive zone of Bridgewater. Duffy's there to try and defend. Tugas there trying to defend too. Good defense right there by Polak. Back down into the defender. Excellent blocker save right there by Hubert as it deflects left. Almost a big hit right there by Duffy. And the puck goes to the left. And Polak in there in that scrum right there. Hubert finally gets the puck. Pass it back out to Vadnais coming out of the penalty box. Less than five minutes to go here in this period. And stoppage of play as the Bridgewater State goalie covers the puck up. Polak and looks like number 17 of Bridgewater exchange of words. Major thing that Rhode Island College cannot let happen is they can't lose their composure. Absolutely. We've seen time and time again, they lose their composure, they lose the game. And the puck goes behind the net. Bridgewater still trying to get something going, but McGurl is there. Flips it back down to Estrella, trying to clear it out, but Costa is there. Costa passes it along the boards. McGurl has it right behind the net. Passes it back to Estrella, who goes back up to Costa. Costa trying to get it. Passes it back to Estrella, and Bridgewater finally gets it, but gives it away right to McGurl. McGurl looking for Estrella right there in front of the net. And Maxwell will have it. Maxwell off the glass down into the boards. And McGurl gets hit right there along the boards. Vickers trying to put a hit on. Didn't work. Lost his stick. Picks it back up. And Bridgewater has it in the corner. And Maxwell tried to went, went for the hit instead of the puck, which caused the puck to go out of the zone. Both teams very, very physical in this game. I mean, I wonder if there's going to come a point and get so physical that coach says, hey, go in and take them out of the game. That'd be an interesting strategy. Would be very interesting. We've seen it. We've seen it happen before. Not one that I would agree with. Back down into the corner. A shot there by Duffy. Looks like it went off the chest pad of one of the. Well, you see what I mean set. here. Yeah. Good. Very physical. 
They remind me a lot of uh, some football teams out there who take shots after the whistle, but the refs don't see it. And it's ridiculous. Not things you should be doing. No, that kind of just, you know, from a fan and a commentator's point of view, that just shows uh, lack of discipline. Lack of discipline, exactly. And Rhode Island College is doing an excellent job so far not to let it get the best of them, but it's still only the first period. That remains to be seen. Now, I don't think that's something that Coach Real would do, though. And the puck goes behind the net. Duffy has it. Gets hit, scrumming in the corner. Looks like Duffy's getting into it with a Bridgewater defender. Back up to number 21, a shot and off the leg pad of Ryan Hubert. Hubert showing great confidence as a freshman, but it, you know, getting thrown in there against a very tough team like Bridgewater. Excellent job. And the puck goes down, and we will get a line change here for Bridgewater. And passes it back up to DeLuca. And fires it nice across pass. ice right there to Vadnais. Little hit from behind right there. No reason for that. And, and it's, it's going to get called. And there is the call. Stoppage in play with 2 minutes, 26 seconds. Hit from behind right there. Number 30, uh, number 3. Trying to get a last name on this person. Bachelor to the box. Looks like this will be a two minute penalty. And Rhode Island College will go on the power play. The girl has the face off, but Bridgewater ultimately gets it. It's a two on two right now. Fires it back down into the onto the side. Puck goes up. Hubert is there, almost loses the puck, but is quick there to recover. You know, down one goal, this power play right here is crucial, especially to get some momentum going into the next period. Absolutely. Little extra uh, curricular activity there by Vickers. Rep didn't see it, let them play. And the, another big thing, Mike, what they, which has kind of plagued them all season, and it just happened, giving away turnovers on a power play in the neutral zone. And that's got to be... Six or seventh shorthanded goal we've seen against this Rhode Island College team. And that'll make the score two to nothing with one minute and 46 seconds to go. Rhode Island College still on the power play. Medeiros will take the face off along with Polak, DeLuca, Huber. And can't tell who that last defenseman is. Tugis. That is your five for Rhode Island College. Five on four right here. DeLuca looking for a pass. Finds Polak. Polak has it. Crosses the blue line. Pass it back up to Medeiros. Back down to Polak. Polak looking for the pass in front of the net. It is not there. Huber has it at the blue line. Huber passes it back down to Polak. Kind of stole the puck there from DeLuca. But DeLuca recovers. DeLuca looking for the shot, not there. Passes it off. Back to DeLuca. DeLuca looking, looking in front of the net, right off the leg of a Bridgewater defender. If he waited just two more seconds, it looked like Polak would have gotten open. And now the goalie's trying to fight the Rhode Island College defender. At some a point, the punch is being thrown. At some point, the refs got to take control of this game. Like it's our, it's only the first period. And now we have a, a throw right <laughs> DeLuca <laughs> is down. John Scott and now everybody number 10. Grab a partner. It's time and this to was very predictable. And, and there are punches being thrown by multiple players out there. With a, <laughs> with a minute and seven seconds to go. And the ref. Trying to hear what the ref's saying, but... What a skirmish that was, Mike. First fight I've seen as a broadcaster, I will say that. First here, too. It looks like DeLuca. DeLuca and Medeiros are both gone. And you take two major players, major key players, out of the game in the first period when you're already down by two, 
the rest of the game could get ugly. Bridgewater's starting goaltender has also been thrown out of the game. Very interesting situation we have here as the ref talks to Ryan Huber, the captain. Hubert goes back into the net. Are you sure the goaltender yes. from Bridgewater got thrown out, Mike? Well, maybe he did not. I don't know why he wouldn't. It's just as much his fault as... It was his as fault. As <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Are they really not going to throw this kid out of the game? That's unbelievable. DeLuca down on the ice getting the, getting the crap beaten out of him. Yeah. And they don't throw the instigator out of the game. If anything, that should be a 10-minute instigation penalty. Unbelievable. And it has started first period here in the game. And the captains of both teams exchanging some words here. Trying to sort things out. Refs going to the Bridgewater and Rhode Island College benches to try and almost give a sideline warning, if you want to call it that. I mean, only a minute to go in the first period, and we have a brawl. Brawl in the Lynch Arena. Good way to spend a Friday night. Not surprising between these two teams. They obviously hate each other. And it looks like the goalie will stay in the game for Bridgewater. Head scratcher, major head scratcher on that one. Really makes you think what's going through these officials' minds. What do you think would have happened if Falk was officiating? I think Falk would have broken it up. Yeah. As much as I don't like him, as much as I think he hates the anchorman, I think he would have broken that up and none of that would have ever happened. You know why that wouldn't have happened? Because Falk would have sent all of them to the box in the first place yeah. before that would have broken out. Oh, yeah. Falk's awful, but Falk's looking out for you. <laughs> Still can't. And it looks like some jawing going on between the benches right here. And it's up to Huber and it's up to Coach Real to get this team under control. You know, you want your team to be aggressive, Mike, but you don't want them to be fighting every stoppage, you know? No. And taking little cheap shots. Again, we went back to it. That's just a sign of a very undisciplined team. And I don't know what the refs are trying to sort out right here. Time to get back to hockey. Absolutely. Now with a minute left here, Mike, say no goals are let up uh, by Rhode Island College. Your coach real? What are you telling these guys in the locker room? Be less aggressive. Be less aggressive. Physically be more aggressive mentally and on the game. Good strategy. Pretty fair. On the other side, you can tell them be more aggressive physically. Get all your players kicked out, and this game's over in a, in a period and a half. <laughs> Forfeit the loss, we all go home. <laughs> <laughs> but realistically, say keep your mind on the game. You know, it's pretty tough when a brawl just happened right, right in front of you. And I'd be telling one of my players to, hey, go in there and take that goalie right out. And now the goalie is talking to the ref. Still some jawing going on here between both teams. Drown with the beautiful mask as we've talked about already. Absolutely. I believe. I love the American flag. Got the American flag, flag on the yes. back of it. Got the, the bear, the red and black bear. And you know what? He is getting kicked out of the game, Mike. I apologize. He should be. Yeah, absolutely. You don't swing and, and not get kicked out. Now they're warming up the goalie. It looks like 
the ref is having a few words with a couple people down there. And that's not right of him to do. You're the official, keep your mind on the game. You can't let that kind of stuff bother you, somebody talking outside the ring. In sports, it, it gets so competitive, you gotta just block, as, as Bill Belichick always says, block the noise, ignore the right. noise, it's just noise. And I mean, Falk is good at that, because he must have a lot of people around here who don't like him. Yeah, well, I know two in particular. <laughs> Not that we want to keep bringing him into this. <laughs> so Drown will be gone. As well he should be. And backup goalie for Bridgewater. Not sure of a name. He doesn't even have a jersey, Mike. <laughs> I don't think Bridgewater was prepared for this. No. This actually, Mike, <laughs> this is a very interesting uh, turning point of the game. It, it really is. Be. Now the starting goaltender's gone. You know, we don't know how much experience this backup has. The ref's still trying to sort things out right now. They really just need to get back to hockey at this point. Absolutely. It's getting a little ridiculous with the time. Uh, with its time stoppage. Bridgewater State's sporting their black jerseys, black pants with the red and white stripes on the outline and Rhode Island College sporting their gold jerseys with the red and white stripes at the bottom and the gold socks. As we finally get things under control, or so we hope, you think this is the last Rhode Island College and Bridgewater game that Jacobs will ref, Mike? No, I don't think so. Got to keep it interesting, you know? I'm going to blame it on Lusky. <laughs> Why is that, Mike? I felt like blaming it on Lusky. As Coach Real is talking to the ref right here, ref's kind of probably just giving him a warning, telling him to keep his team under control as a protocol and so is the other side but i'll tell you what mike this isn't over oh no not absolutely even, not, not even close there is going to be so much chippiness still in this game and mcgirl will take the face off your five for the anchor man are mcgirl huber tugas vickers and estrella and i gotta say what Drown did before he got kicked out of this game was John Scott-esque. It really was. There was no reason for him to come out of that box and just start. Hey, you know what, Mike? <laughs> start beating him down. In the spirit of the All-Star weekend, what a good way to start off All-Star weekend. Absolutely. Representing good, good old John Scott. <laughs> Tugas, I, I'm sorry, McGurl will take the face off. And Bridgewater State wins the face off. Tugas, good job right there. A little bit of a hand pass, but the ref looked the other way on it. Estrella shoots it, and it is off the boards behind the glass. Vickers is right there. I believe Vickers was one of the... Uh, Vickers and McGurl have been chippy this game. And it's good to see them back out there. Be aggressive. So it's Vatane Medeiros who got kicked out of the game. If I'm correct. No, it was uh, Medeiros and DeLuca. It was DeLuca, correct. DeLuca. Yeah, that's right. Shot goes in front of the net, and it is passed back out. And number three skates out of the penalty box very fast. Oh, no, right there. Passes it right to him. Excellent awareness right there by Huber. Trying to get a big hit right there is McGurl. McGurl going for the big hit again. Not successful. Still trying to be a little chippy. Is Estrella a big hit into the board? Estrella lays on top of him as we end and go to intermission. The refs quickly try and break it up before something else escalates in this period. 
And as we leave you after this first period, the score is two to nothing Bridgewater over Rhode Island College. We'll be back for the second period. Welcome back to period number two. Rhode Island College still down two to nothing to the Bridgewater State Bears. Mike, a very interesting end to the period. To say the least. To say the least. And, you know, after reviewing uh, the footage of that brawl right there. <laughs> Unbelievable. It was very interesting, to say the least. Well, it's fun to see. Hopefully we'll see some more. Good physical play. Absolutely. Hard nose. The girl two gets Vickers, Huber, and Duffy are your five for the anchorman. Still on a power play for 53 seconds. Now, Mike, what's your prediction for this period? My prediction for this period is there's still going to be a lot of physical play, but nobody's going to get kicked out this period. And McGurl flips the puck down back into the zone. Bridgewater State tries to hit it out. That's for the game of hockey. I couldn't even tell you at this point. Strategy kind of went out the window on that play over there. Trying to pass it right there is Vickers. Vickers gets it back to Duffy. Duffy over to Huber. Huber misses the net. Back up to Duffy. Good job by Duffy right there, keeping the puck in the zone. McGurl has it. Back up to Duffy. Duffy trying to look for the shot. McGurl gets the open lane in the middle. Back to Huber. Fires it across, but it is no good to Tugas. And Duffy tried to stop it, but it is not successful. Nine seconds left on his power play. And Huber lost control of that puck right there. Passes it back along to Duffy. And the penalty box is now clear as Pike comes skating out of the box. Fired it back down. What a rip right there. And the puck goes along the boards. Bridgewater State, Gerhardt flips it back down. And Hubert is there to stop it. Pass back up to Duffy. Could not control it. And there's Estrella right there. And it goes off a of Bridgewater State defender's stick. A little extracurricular activity right there by Estrella and the Bridgewater defender as we get a stoppage in play. And Polak will take the faceoff for the anchorman. Does not convert on the faceoff. Bridgewater State off the boards. Passes it to number 17. Number 17 looking for an open shot. And it is shut down by Hubert. Excellent job. Another great save by Hubert. Looking confident there in the goal. As, as we said before, the young freshman. Getting some experience against a good team as of, uh, Bridgewater. Tugas will take the face off. I believe it will also be Pine taking the face off. Pike. 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 Don't have my glasses. And the puck down into the corner. Still fighting for it. And it looks like Tugas will have the puck. Tugas trying to fire it up, but it gets stopped by a Bridgewater defender. Trying to look for the open man in front of the net is Pike. But they couldn't get it to him. And Pannon has it. Fires it back up, but it's, <coughs> excuse me, stopped there by the Brid Bridgewater defender. Fired in front of the net. A wide open net left there by Hubert. But it is quickly. A good play by Gerhardt. Wonder if he's related to Toby Gerhardt. Former Minnesota Viking running back and Stanford Cardinal. And Bridgewater buries the goal. By Hubert says he has it in his glove, but it looked it like, looked, it, it, looked yeah, like it, was it was in the net. <laughs> I don't think he can do that. And number 17 with the goal for Bridgewater. That'll make it 3-0. 17 minutes and 38 seconds to go. Now if you're Dennis Real, you think about pulling him, putting Pat Noak in. I would wait just a little bit longer just to not hurt his confidence. Right. Montesanto with a faceoff. And a little bit of a line switch up right here. Montesanto is now in a line with uh, Saunders, Vadnais. 
Wait, I thought Vat no Vat Nates did not get kicked he out. He did of not. Game. DeLuca that was Medeiros. and Medeiros okay. were thrown out of the game. Bridgewater State has the puck, fires it back down into the corner. The dump and chase method, I see uh, Bridgewater is doing a lot of that. Saunders tries to fire it in the middle. That was dangerously close to being offside, and it looked like they're going to get him for a trip. A little bit of incidental contact right there, but they call him for the trip. And that'll be number 12, Drew Quirk, going to the box. 17 minutes and six seconds. Oh, Mike, I'd like to see how much time that Bridgewater has been on a power play because it has been, for one, way too much, and two, I feel like it would be an incredible number. <laughs> Back down to the corner it goes. And Bridgewater State has it, fires it back. Number 24, looking for the shot, is no good. And another stoppage in play. I think they're going to say that one went out of play. Yeah, it looked like it nipped the net a little bit. 16 minutes, 53 seconds, and a minute 48 left on the power play. We'll see what Coach Real has drawn up. What do you think Coach Real said to those guys in the locker room, Mike? Was I can't say what I think he said. Hey, you know what? If I think it was along the lines of play the game, though. Yes. Scrumming for it in the corner. Bridgewater State finally gets it. Well, there will be consequences. A couple extra sprints in practice. Absolutely. Off the pad of Hubert. Nice dive right there by Hubert. Excellent job taking out two defenders. Michael Ryder like. That was excellent. Great effort by the vet. McGurl going for the big hit right there. McGurl's going for a lot of big hits today, I noticed. Trying to Not always up. smart ones either. Trying to vamp up the physical play here. Bridgewater State has it. Again, another going for another hit is McGurl. And Hubert is there, trips over, trips the goalie, and now Hubert's getting into it. And we predicted that they weren't done, Mike. Almost another brawl right in the same area. As we get a stoppage in play, and McGurl will now go to the penalty box. I don't understand what McGurl did, though. Cross check. Cross check. I don't know about that one. Myself looked, either. Looked like uh, Hubert dove for the puck and the guy, the Bridgewater State defender, flipped over him. Sure what it looked like from here. And Pike will take the face off along with Tugis. Still fighting for the puck. Maxwell gets it, fires it back out, and clears the puck. And the backup goalie for Bridgewater putting on the Jersey of the starting goaltender who got kicked out of the game. Unless it's uh, the unless same it's guy, him. unless it's the same <laughs> guy and he put on the <laughs> different pads. <laughs> who knows? You know, club hockey. You never know. So it's a five on three now. I didn't even realize it was a five on three. And Hubert, good job right there, staying strong in front of the net. Fighting for his Rhode Island College. It's Costa. And Bridgewater passes it back out to the point, fires it along, looking for the shot, looking for the open lane, and it is no good. And Hubert just sprawling out right there, diving, making a great dive. And it was also a good play by Costa, not letting that puck go through the back door. Absolutely, 15 minutes and two seconds left in the second period. And one of uh, the most chippy game that I have ever broadcasted, as I said before. I'd have to agree. Now, one of the games you broadcasted last year, did you say there was a brawl in one of those as well? I have not seen a brawl. No. All right, well, there's a first for everything, Absolutely. Mike. Absolutely. Rowan College trying to get the puck, trying to center it. Stoppage in play again. Seen some very physical play, and then words exchanged. Teams like Sacred Heart, Roger Williams, 
but never a brawl before. So that was nice to see. And we got Sacred Heart next week here at Dennis Lynch Arena, I believe. Should be a very interesting game. That it should be. Montesanto with a face off. We'll be here at 8 p.m. next week to broadcast that game. A little Friday night tradition. Bridgewater State skating with the puck. Fires it, slap shot. There's no good. Hubert is there to stop it. And of course, if you'd like to continue supporting your Rhode Island College anchorman, you can go attend the Quahog Cup games that they will be playing. Those will be on the Saturday and Sunday, and details will be announced. Passes it back at the blue line, finally crosses. Going for the big hit was Polak, but he just got lit up. Huber is there trying to poke the puck away. Bridgewater State trying to pass it, looking for the open shot for the open man in front of the net. It is not there. Puck goes flying out. McGurl comes flying out of the penalty box. And Rhode Island College has it. Duffy flips it up right to the Bridgewater defender. Oh, McGurl there with a monster hit. I don't know if our camera got that one, but it happened right at the blue line, right after the defender passed it. Stoppage in play, 13 minutes and 31 seconds to go in the second. Score is three to nothing. Rhode Island College is not looking good. No, definitely a lot more sloppy. A lot more sloppy, like we saw at the first, first couple of games of the season. That puck is not going into that offensive zone of Rhode Island College. You know what, I think, you know, losing key guys like Skalabinski, uh, Anania, and uh, Vinny Tadino could have a little bit of an effect on there, you know, losing veterans like that. Absolutely. And another stopping in play, Vickers and a Bridgewater State defender. Vickers walking right away, very smart. Bridgewater defenders down. Looks May have hit his head on the board. You know, that was almost like a Sidney Crosby type, except not as fast. I don't know if you remember that, but Sidney Crosby was skating, lost an edge on his skate, head slammed the boards. And if his head did slam the boards, like you said, hopefully he's... Could be a concussion. Hopefully he's not severely hurt. Not a lot of padding in those hockey helmets. Not a lot of padding, but I think he's going to be all right. I think he'll be all right as well. We got 13 minutes and 11 seconds to go here in the second. Estrella will take your face off along with Duffy Vickers. Looks like uh, the other Duffy and Costa. And to the penalty box goes number two for Bridgewater State. Wild. That'll be a two-minute power play for Rhode Island College, but they did let up a shorthanded goal already today. Hopefully that does not continue. And Vickers getting into it with the defender behind the net. And Vickers will go to the box. Not sure why. Now what's that phrase? I don't know. Which phrase would that be, Mike? Four on four hockey. Four on four hockey is the best hockey. And we will have it for a minute and 54 seconds. You know, the refs are probably going with a zero tolerance policy. You know, going to be a lot more strict with the calls, unfortunately. Could play into a big factor of the outcome of this game. Why don't they just disappear and let them play their game? <laughs> do like they do on the pond. Refs had half a brain, they'd let them play. Twelve minutes and 46 seconds to go. And another stoppage in play. It was covered up by the Bridgewater goalie. I don't even know what to call the Bridgewater goalie. He's wearing the starter's jersey. We'll call him Drown anyways. Well, we'll call him Drown. Costa with the puck. It may well be Drown. Costa with the puck gets hit right there, loses possession of the puck. Goes behind the net. Polak was chasing him, but Bridgewater State has the puck. Excellent job there by Pinot knocking the puck away. 
getting physical right here is Polak, and Duffy ends up with the puck. Duffy passes it back to Pannone. Duffy has it again. Looking for an open man. Duffy has it. Polak right in front of the net, but he could not get it to him. And Polak acting like a spark plug out there. <laughs> Very high energy this game, as always. And Costa will have the puck. Off the boards it goes. A missed pass right there. McGurl could not get it. And strumming behind the net. Bridgewater has it. Trying to screen in front of the net right there as a Bridgewater defender. At what point do you pull Hubert, Mike, if he lets up one more goal? If he lets up one more goal. Bridgewater State has it. Shot. And it was blocked. Not really sure who blocked that puck. Off the boards it goes behind Polak. Polak gets hit right into the ref. Takes a little bit of a swing at Pike right there. And we got a whistle. And Pol they got Polak on that. If the ref wasn't right there. Blatant. If the ref wasn't right there, he probably wouldn't have called it that way. But Polak gets sent to the bench. It was blatant. There was no reason for it. And now we got five on three for about two minutes and six seconds. You don't need to throw a wrist, or throw a fist, I should say. Throw a wrist. Maxwell, Tugas, and Huber are your three for the anchorman. Number 12 will take the face off for Bridgewater. Maxwell has the puck along the boards it goes. And Bridgewater State has it. And Vickers is out of the box, so it'll be five on four. And passes it up to 21. A horrible pass right there. Not sure who that was to. A little miscommunication right there. Passes it back up for number 21. 21 has it. Slap shot. Excellent save right there by Hubert. And the puck crosses center ice. Number three has it. Tugas trying to defend. And a shot, and it is... Looks like it either went above or next to the net. Huber trying to get the puck out of there. And Bridgewater State ends up having it. Passes it back up to the center of the blue line. Passes it back down to number six, but it is wide. Oh, a massive hit right there by Huber. And we are not finished here, folks. The chippiness <laughs> continues. Excellent hit. That, that was about as clean as a hit as you could get. I don't know why they stopped play. <laughs> and they're sending Huber to the box. I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Unbelievable. That was a clean hit. Yeah, that it was. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Unbelievable. How many times have they been on five on three, Mike? How many times? It's way too many. Too many. Unreal. And Hubert clearly frustrated right there. Montesanto will come out into the ice. And take the face off is Quirk. So we've got Quirk, Duffy, and Montesanto, a very young three players out there. And Bridgewater has it, passes it back up. Yet again, it's five on three. Puck is tipped up into the glass. Bridgewater State passes back up to the blue line. Looking for the open lane, and he buries it. Number 24, Bridgewater State makes it four to nothing. Polak will come out of the box. And Hubert is complaining to the refs, not sure why. Must have saw something that we didn't. Looks like Dennis Real is going to keep him in. Dennis Real, of course, first year as coach for Rhode Island College Anchorman. Trying to turn a new page in this program. Haven't had a lot of success in the past couple of years. Uh, they brought him in, like you said, this year. Straighten him out. And it looks like Pat Noak will go in for Hubert. And good call, Mike. Four goals, and that'll do it. Excellent job by Hubert, though. Staying strong, 
course, like we said many times, a freshman. He's not happy. Showing some frustration there. Coach Dennis Real not doing anything about it either, which might be the best thing to do in this situation. And Pat Oak, an experienced uh, veteran on this Rhode Island College team, will take the net, but it's still going to be a five on three. The ref telling the scorekeeper what the deal is with the clock. I think it'll be a five on four now. It should be. Right now it's Tugas Quirk and Duffy. What do you think about the new players on this team, Mike? Looks solid so far. I think it'll take a little time before they realize how Coach Real really wants his team to play. Of course, an adjustment period. They Absolutely. Did have, they did have two games uh, last weekend. You know, again, beating Quinnipiac, uh, unfortunately losing to Eastern Connecticut State, who always has a strong program in every sport. Absolutely. Of course, your Rhode Island College anchor women and anchor men will take on Eastern Connecticut State University tomorrow at the Murray Center. Tip-offs at 1 and 3 p.m. respectively. Andrew Spaziano and myself will have the call on 90.7 WXIN and Anchor TV. Nine minutes, 45 seconds. Score is four to nothing. Hopefully Rhode Island College can get a spark going, get something going. Usually a changing goalie uh, does the trick for that. I guess I thought it was going to be a five on four, but I guess let's go five on three for the next one minute and uh, 30 why not? seconds. Only a minute and 30 seconds. Oh, it should have been that, five on four. That's what I'm saying. Possibly Hubert's antics going out to the bench. That's true. Freshman mistake. Either that or they got Huber for a, a double minor. For a clean hit. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure what's going through the minds of these refs tonight, but who knows. Bridgewater State on the attack again. Number 24 passes it back to Pike. Pike has the puck. Try saying that 10 times fast. Shoots it, blocked by Noak. And Quirk is there, fires the puck out, gets it into the neutral zone. Fires it cross ice. Tugas is trying to defend. Slap shot, and it is no good. It's off one of the Rhode Island College defenders. Another slap shot, just wide left. Stopped there by Bridgewater State. <coughs> Excuse me. Passes it over. Trying to step, trying to stop the, the shot right there is Quirk. And Noak falls on his back. Excellent save right there with the glove. And of course, good to see Pat Noak in net. Seen him win right here before. Our the first one of the season, he, he led the anchorman to a victory. I believe it was an overtime victory against that it was. Roger, Roger Williams. Williams. One of the more fun games I've called as a broadcaster. And Montesanto will take the face off. Back up to number three, who passes it down into the face-off circle. Shot off the glove of Noak. Excellent awareness right there. That was a rip of a shot right there. Back up to Bridgewater, and Huber comes out of the net. Not sure who's left in the net, Mike, or in the penalty box. It doesn't look to me like there's anybody in there. And Strange. Co Costa has the puck, flips it out. Hubert, excellent hustle the right there. The girl is still in the box. Oh, he is, okay. I didn't see it from this angle. Louise is five on four now. Fires it back out. And a stoppage in play. McGurl comes out of the box. Not sure what the stoppage is for. It looks like Maxwell sharing some words with the Bridgewater defender. And now Maxwell will go to the box. Unbelievable. Oh, jeez. This is unreal. 
Unreal. And it, it Maxwell's getting Max kicked out of the game. For what? What did he do? This is unbelievable. I can't believe that Rick has lost three players. They've lost a full forward line. Was Maxwell even in that brawl or that skirmish? He was not. <laughs> you know what? The refs might have came over to the bench and said, any more stuff like that, immediate ejection. That's my that's my guess. Uh, Lusky and Jacobs also might be Tortolano and Falk. Hey, you know. Wearing, wearing the wrong shirts just like <laughs> Drown is. <laughs> <laughs> for Bridgewater State. Well, both goalies are holding up a shutout right now. Still a not long, sure which long game ahead long of game, us. Long game, long game. There's still seven minutes and 43 seconds left in the second. Unreal. Four to nothing is the score. And Pinoan will take the face off. Along with Costa. Uh, that is Francis out there. Like we said, three players gone. That's the equivalent of losing a full forward line, though two of them were defensemen. Yeah, basically. Can't tell who the last player on the ice is for the anchorman. You know, shame to see Maxwell get ejected like that. I mean, from this angle, what did he? We didn't even see him do anything, unless he made a quick punch. Didn't see it. Didn't see it either. They let Polak get away with it. Well, they sent it to the box. Waiting on the refs here. I don't know what they're waiting for. What is this, a TV timeout, Mike? <laughs> Seriously, what are the refs doing? I, I couldn't tell you. Does it take this long to eject somebody? I guess so. How, how long does it take to eject somebody? Number 18 out. That's it. Right. Cross, cross them off the stat sheet. Unreal. But no, we got to have a whole 20 minute discussion with the scorekeepers. This they don't want anybody getting sleep tonight. That's what it comes down to. This is unbelievable. They want everybody to crash and burn. Where's Falk? Bring in Falk. Oh, yeah. First time I've wanted him to come in. <laughs> still, still discussing with the scorekeepers right here. Not Unbelievable. Sure. And it's Lusky. <laughs> What a surprise. What, exactly. What a surprise. I think it's interesting. Rep just going over to the bench. Coach Real not happy about something he just said. Just saw a smirk from Dennis Real. Ref's still talking to the bench right here. As you see, that bench is getting awfully thin on, uh, on Rhode Island College's side. Absolutely is. You know, you take out you take out three of your vets, you lose three tonight. It's veterans too. <laughs> what do you have left? Dennis Real is going to have to start recruiting. And now Lusky is still talking to the scorekeepers, and we finally get back to play it's here. It's about time. Seven minutes, forty-three seconds to go. Pinone lost the faceoff. Bridgewater State has it. Shoots it. Tried to get the re redirection. And Bridgewater State gets the puck. Unreal. And Noak is there to stop the puck. Leaves it for Huber. And the puck goes flying down to the other end. No icing called because of the power play. That's a 10 minute. That's a 10 minute. Game misconduct. Game misconduct. 
Well, how come they didn't get a 10 minute for the other guys? Dumb call. And they bury it, top shelf, top left corner. Bridgewater State goes up five to nothing with six minutes, 58 seconds to go. And you can thank Lusky for that one, Mike. <laughs> Lusky. You can thank Lux Lusky and Jacobs. Lusky, it's all on Lusky. We're gonna go four, five on four here for the next nine minutes and 16 seconds. This is unbelievable. Another 20 minute discussion on that. And the cool, the scorekeeper, as he just picked up on the microphone, said it was his first day. Rough first day at the office. <laughs> I guess if you're pursuing that kind of thing, best place to start is club hockey. Absolutely. And Duffy loses the face off. Bridgewater has it, passes it up to the center line, and he just got deked out right there. It was Tugas, but the pass was too wide. Back along the boards it goes. Bridgewater State looking for the open man in front of the net. Passes it back behind the net. Looking for something to open up there. Still five on four. Number three has it. Fake shot right there. Excellent look. And they bury it. That makes it six nothing. But the Coach goal Dennis Real not happy. Pulling out his phone over there on the bench. And the scorekeeper hasn't changed the score, but not, there he is. Six to nothing is the score. Now that's something I've never seen a coach pull out his phone during the middle of a game. Montesanto will take the face off. And Bridgewater State has the puck, passes it back up. Bridgewater State still has it, passes it up to the center line. Saunders is chasing it down. Noak goes behind the goal, tries to stop it, not successful. Back into the corner, two players go, scrumming for it. Passes it back up to the blue line. Passes it back over, still looking for something to open up. They got all the time in the world. Back up to the point. Number six has it. Excellent job right there by Noak, getting a glove on it. Pass back up to Bridgewater. Pass back down. Still looking for something to open up in front of the net. Looking for number 18 in front of the net. Back up to the point it goes. Back down and back up again. 19 has it. Pass it back down to three. Number three is looking for open man. Back up to three. And they're just having a field day with this defense, Mike. Unreal. And 18 has the puck behind the net. Passes it. No, it doesn't pass it. Passes it back up to number three. And number three still waiting for something to open up. Still seven minutes and 24 seconds left on this power play. Passes it back down. And Duffy, good deflection right there. But Bridgewater State still has it. Excellent job there by Duffy pushing the man down. And another great hit right there. Say Rhode Island College looks confused is definitely an understatement. And Montesanto got hit right there, lost his balance, and hit the ice. And the much needed change for uh, Bridgewater State after that offensive possession right there took up about a minute. On the attack again, but the puck goes too wide. Quirk has it, tries to fire it back. And McGurl hit his man and he lost balance. Passes it back up. And players are just hitting the ice tonight, Mike. I guess so. Vickers has it. Vickers lost the puck. Vickers gains it again. Down into the corner. Someone goes flying. It looks like Vickers. Up across center ice. Still six minutes and ten seconds to go on this power play. A little bit of a collision right there. Bridgewater State tries to clear it up. Trying to run a play here. Excellent. Now, 
figures, Mike. Now they're doing the excellent passing. And somebody just dropped on the ice for Bridgewater. Looked like he caught an elbow to the head or something to the head. But he gets back up. And Bridgewater fires it back into the corner, goes along the glass, could not control it, and the goalie gets the puck. The goalie. The goalie. No name known. <laughs> but that's okay. He's still preserving a shutout. Another whistle blows. Going to guess an offside? I would say so. Good opportunity to change up the lines here for Rhode Island College and Bridgewater State. Costa and Quirk go off the ice. Pannone, Duffy, Francis, and Huber are onto the ice now. I guess this is a, this is a uh, good opportunity for those young guys to get experience, Mike. Absolutely. With all the vets out of the game. I mean, it's 6 nothing. you got nothing to lose. And the puck is passed up by Bridgewater into the neutral zone. Good pass across ice right there. Gerhardt has the puck. And Hubert has it, trying to get rid of it, but Gerhardt still gets it, looking for the open man in front of the net. Excellent shot right there by number 11, but it is not successful. And fires it along the boards, gets it out of the zone. Down the ice goes the puck. Still five minutes left on this power play. This seems like the longest power play, Mike. Francis does. Gets, gets hit across the boards. And Estrella fires it, but it's off the pad of the no-name goalie. Bridgewater has it. Shoots it, nokes on his behind right there, but he gets back up. A big hit right there along the boards, and Noke covers it up. Estrella put a heck of a hit right there. Still 4.35 on the penalty. 2.18 to go, second period. Still got a whole other 20 minutes to go. <laughs> gonna, be, gonna be an interesting film to watch come practice Monday morning. Face off one by Bridgewater. Bridgewater has it. Down into the corner he goes. Tries to get it across the net. Gets hit right in front of the net right there. Somebody lost their stick, not sure who. And that would be Costa who lost their stick. Bridgewater State still has it, looking for that next goal to put him up by seven. Rhode Island College is trying to get something on the board, something to go into the locker room and be proud of. But right now, there's absolutely nothing they could be proud of for this game. Back down it goes, and that'll be an icing with one minute and 37 seconds to go. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's the first icing we've seen all game. I believe so, which is good considering the rest we have. <laughs> Got to watch what I say, but believe me. Looks like Saunders will take the face off for the anchorman, along with Francis, Costa, Polak. And Tugas, bad pass right there, or bad handle, I should say. Bodies flying everywhere for Rhode Island College. Bridgewater State trying to get onside. Pike barely gets onside right there. Now, Mike, for the third period, you think Fist will fly again? I don't think Fist will fly. You don't think I so? I think there will be big hits. I think there's going to be a lot of commentary going on down there. I would have to agree with you. I don't think Fist will be flying, though. Polak has a breakaway right here. Excellent shot, and he scores. Jersey Polak with the goal with one minute left, and it was shorthanded to put Rhode Island College on the board. Score is now 6-1. to one. I think that's the first time we've read a goal in here. I would say so as well. 6-1 <laughs> to one the score. Saunders wins the face-off. 
And Saunders gets a little tangled up right there as Francis gets the puck. Oh, he passes it right to the Bridgewater defender. Good defensive play by Duffy. Duffy loses, loses sight of the puck. Polak is back there playing defense along with Quirk. And player gets knocked down right there. Polak still showing a lot of effort right there. Good leadership showing that he won't give up. And he won't back down. And pass it back along. Bridgewater. Good pass right there. Just couldn't get to it fast, fast enough. Quirk was on the ice right there. Looked like he got knocked down. Five seconds left in this period. Strella has the puck, tried to get it out, but he came off the stick a little weird. And Francis will have the puck. The clock says zero, but I don't, I don't understand what that was. And what a bizarre way to end the period. And we will return for the third period here at Dennis Lynch Arena. Six to one is the score. Bridgewater ahead of Rhode Island College. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Lynch Arena. Start of the third period. Score is six to one in favor of the Bridgewater State Bears. Rhode Island College will be on the penalty kill for three more minutes to start this period. Mike. Your coach real in the locker room. What did you say to these guys? I I don't even have an answer to that. No. It's six one going into the third period. You've had three players kicked out of the game. You've had to bring in a backup goalie. Maybe just get get out of this one without injury. Hey Dave, we're gonna need a gansett after this one. <laughs> The face-off is won by Bridgewater. Huber pokes the puck out. Bridgewater State still has the puck. <coughs> Excuse me. Duffy fires it, and it is gloved by the no-name goalie. The no-name goalie still out there. Yeah, kind of a mystery. I really want to know what this kid's name is. According to his jersey, it's Drown. All right, he's earned the name Drown. I mean, he's only let up one goal. Fires, and it is off the pads. Goes along the boards. He only let up one goal because he was gone in the first period. It's true. He had half a brain. He wouldn't have come out of that box. Oh, I'm talking about the backup goalie. Backup goalie only let up one goal. Oh, yes, that's right. No, Drone... The real drone yielded a shutout. He did have a shutout. And a breakaway right here. And it is off the post. Oh, man, what a. Then we have a whistle. And a slash. Unreal. Unbelievable. And Huber will go to the box yet again. Second unreal call. And welcome to the jungle again here at the Dennis Lynch Arena. And the faceoff is won by Bridgewater. Still have it, passing it deep to deep. Pat Noak is there to stop it. Pass back up to Bridgewater. Pass back along the blue line. Looking for that open lane. Finally gets the open lane, but it is shut down by Noak. Casa has a puck behind the net. Scrumming in behind the net. It's Bridgewater in Rhode Island College. Bridgewater gets the puck. Passes it back up. Looking for the shot, and a good glove there by Pat Noak. Good glove by Pat Noak, but a very embarrassing game from the anchorman. I'd have to agree as well, Mike. Tomorrow I'd want to be hiding under the bed. Awful, awful game from the anchorman. Yeah. 
Face off one by Rhode Island College and it is cleared down. Francis has the puck, a little miscue right there with the goal, with the no-name goalie. Pass back along the glass and another miscue right there. This goalie must be a freshman, Mike. Must be. I mean, he doesn't have a name, he doesn't exist. <laughs> that is true. And now Duffy pushing after the whistle blows. Eighteen minutes and two seconds left in the third period. Six to one is the score. Still 57 seconds left on the power play for Bridgewater. And a long 18 minutes to go in the game. I would say in regulation, but it's five goals down. We've seen stranger things happen, Mike. I don't think we have. And number 13. <coughs> Good hit right there by Bork in front of the goal. Oh, I apologize, that is Duffy. It's not like the Murray Center. The Murray Center works magic. Not the Dennis Lynch Arena. <laughs> And a stoppage in play. Trying to get the crowd pumped up, playing a little dropkick Murphy's here. The song was written by Woody Guthrie. Just pointing it out. Well, the album says it's by the dropkick Murphy's. Uh, if you read the liner notes, it says written by Woody Guthrie. Tell you what, this is one of the better hockey songs out there. Ugh. Bridgewater State wins it and miscued right there with that pass. Had to open net. Screen right there is Saunders fighting in front of the net right there. We got a stoppage in play. The whistle was before that puck went out of play also. And it looks like, looks like both of them are going to net. Oh man, these refs are horrific. Absolutely horrific. Awful. And on comes again the hit song by Dropkicks Murphys, shipping up to Boston. Disgusting. Why don't you like that song, Mike? It's a story for another time, but I've almost been very severely hurt many times during this song. It brings back flashbacks. Okay. And Bridgewater State has the puck, passes it across. Still looking for the open man. And it is stopped there by Nokas. Huber comes out of the penalty box. Still a minute and 35 seconds left in this power play. 35. 17 minutes. Oh, I to apologize. Play. They do. Nope, it's five on four. Five on four, the best kind of hockey. I think you mean four on four, Mike. <laughs> I don't mean four on four. I'll uh, take a five on four over a five on three. Okay. And Estrella with the hit at the blue line. Huber's there defending the puck. Huber trying to get the puck. And Bridgewater has it at the blue line. Passes it across. What a rip right there. And what... And Bridgewater does get the goal. Looks like Pat Noak a bit originally stopped the puck. But Bridgewater will go up 7-1. Yeah, yeah. What an embarrassing game. It started off with such promise, Mike. Both teams being aggressive, both teams being physical. Ever since that brawl? It was the brawl. And the refs not helping the cause at all. With their questionable Even calls. Even with their questionable calls, we're looking at a 4-5-1 game. I have to agree. And McGurl has the puck showing a bit of hustle right there. And Bridgewater passes the puck up. And it is icing. And only the second icing call we've seen. 51 seconds left on the power play. It's not a power play. I don't understand why the pen penalty time's up there. It's interesting. Duffy has the puck. 
trying to center it. Bridgewater gets it. Good hustle by Rick, closing down that two on one. Scorekeeper's just as bad as the refs. And looks like Huber got tied up with a Bridgewater defender right there. A little bit of a questionable no call right there as the Bridgewater State defender wrapped up Huber and brought him to the ground. As he just got juked out right there. A little bit of a football term. And McGurl flips the puck up. The puck goes off the boards, flies up. And Francis could not get a handle on the puck. Flips it back into the offensive zone. And a big hit right there by Vickers. Nice hit. Nice clean hit. Keeping it clean. Best case scenario, Rick walks out of here without any injuries. Keeping it clean, keeping it real. And we got a delayed penalty as Noak skates to, to the bench. And it looks like it'll be blown dead right here. As Nagel comes out of the box and Saunders comes out of the box. Number 23 for Bridgewater. Weebler goes to the box. 15 long minutes to go. But no one Polak, Costa, Montesanto. Montesanto with a face-off. Good face-off win right there by Montesanto. Costa passes it to Tugas. Tugas flips it down to Polak. Gets away from Polak. Montesanto has it. Looking for Pannone. Pannone is open on the wing, but it goes along the boards. Costa has the puck. Costa looking for the shot. Slap shot. It is no good. Bridgewater State has it. And an excellent effort right there by Bridgewater to get the puck out of there. Pannone skating with the puck. Flips it up. Polak hits him right in front of the net right there. And he's got to be careful. Excellent block right there by Bridgewater. Wow. Taking the shot right off the body. Taking the play right out of Dennis Reel's book, too. And Pannone has it. Back up to Polak. Polak looking for something to happen. Costa passes it back down to Pannone. No, and shoots it across and is no good for Tugas. And the puck is fired down. 53 seconds left in this power play for Rhode Island College. And Costa skating up the puck. And Bridgewater is doing an excellent job of defending. Leaving McGurl wide open though. Flips it back up, tried to catch it with the, the glove is Duffy, but he could not catch it. A little bit of uh, tough play right there. The ref just cut off McGurl right there. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, Mike. That was an interesting uh, play by the ref. Back to right up into the boards. Lusky. Lusky. It's all on Lusky. Lusky looks a little bit like one of our employees at WXIN, I have to say. And Estrella gets past it. Badnays passes it back for Estrella, who leaves it for Saunders. Tried to go for the big hit, but it did not work. And now that you say that, I absolutely agree. Bridgewater has it, looking for an open shot. Bridgewater has it behind the net. Excellent no-look pass right there. Noak is shutting the door, though. Bridgewater has it, looking for 21. who's open right next to the net, but it is knocked away. Pass back up to number 18, fires, and Noak is there to shut the door. Good job. And we're going to get a stoppage in play because a Saunders got pushed right over Noak right there. Noak looks a little shaken up, getting up gingerly. I can't stress how embarrassing this game has been. Really awful. I really agree, Mike. And the faceoff is lost by Rhode Island College. 
Puck is in the corner. Bridgewater still has it. Vickers trying to poke it away there. Need to see that real team we saw against Roger Williams. And Holy Cross. And Holy Cross. And, and even Quinnipiac got a massive hit right there on Vickers. And a little bit of a trip right there, but they're not going to call it. That's unbelievable. And it looked like something happened right there. The crowd is not pleased, and the coaching staff of Bridgewater is not pleased, uh, turning into a very, very ugly game. Let's hope he's not seriously hurt as he skates over to the bench. Number 24. Again, Mike, this has just been embarrassing. Agreed. It looked like one of the Rhode Island College players took a shot while the kid was on the ground, right. number 24. I looked back at the point where I saw, it looked like his gloves flew off and he was on the ground. Uh, of course, that happened on the Bridgewater side and the fans reacted accordingly. So not too sure what happened, but just showing a, a severe lack of discipline that we're not used to seeing. Really bad today, more than usual. And the refs have I mean, to get this game under control agreed. at some point. You know, it's been long enough, it, and there's still 11 minutes and 54 seconds left. Not sure what is going on along that bench right there. Jacobs is talking with the scorekeepers. And it looks like, looks like Vickers. Vickers has been kicked out. Vickers has been ejected from the game. Unbelievable. I mean, Mike, <coughs> excuse me, if you were the refs, would you just call this game at this point? I would have called that in the middle of the first period. There's got to be a point where the refs are just going to say enough is enough. They had half a brain. They would have done it a while ago. Looks like he's warming up again, ready to go as we resume hockey. And McGurl's going to the bend, uh, to the penalty box. Unreal. What a ridiculous, <laughs> poor excuse of a game of hockey tonight. Could you even call this hockey? No. Showing some frustration there in the penalty box. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some gloves drop again, Mike. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised either. I think both teams are tired, want to go home. Again, 10.34 Eastern Standard Time at the moment. This has been a three-hour game without commercials. I'm sorry, it's been a two-hour game. Bridgewater looking for the shot, gets tipped by Francis. Francis is going to possibly have a breakaway, but it is not successful. Bridgewater State will go and get the puck, but Francis is there not quick enough to get the puck. I mean, Bridgewater has that 7-1 lead, but I wouldn't even say Bridgewater has played well either. I wouldn't say they played well. They played good enough to get by yeah. this Rhode Island College team, the one we're not used to seeing. And Francis showing a little grit in the corner there. Pannone getting the puck right there. Still got 10 minutes and 54 seconds to go in this game. Fires it across. 
and it is up, tipped by a defender. Bridgewater has it, passes it back down, shoots it up. Bridgewater still has it. A little bit of a pick there. And Huber just lost his cool right there and threw, threw a fist. Let's hopefully, let's hope that's not another ejection right there. No reason for that. He should get ejected. And looks like Huber will go to the box instead of being ejected. And so will number 14 for Bridgewater, Pike. Pike is in the box. Huber's in the box. McGurl's in the box. They gave up on, uh, well, you know what, Mike? It's four on four hockey. It's four on four hockey. That's the type of hockey. <laughs> Tonight, I'd even argue five on four would be. The amounts of five on fours and five on threes we've seen. You know, it's been ridiculous. Wouldn't be surprised if you saw a fight in the parking lot at this rate. <laughs> we'll get right in the middle of it. Why not? Yeah. I mean, clearly the Bridgewater fans are not happy at all. But the stands have filled up for Bridgewater. Yeah, they got a good traveling crowd. As you know, Pawtucket, relatively close to Bridgewater, about a half hour drive away. Uh, one of my family members attended Bridgewater State University, enjoyed his time there. And of course, we have the Rick Faithful also here. Bridgewater has it. And it is cleared down behind the net is Noak. Passes it back up. Tugas has the puck. Trying to get it out of there, and Bridgewater cannot keep it in the zone. At this point, if you're Bridgewater, put in the young guys, see what works, see what doesn't work, you know? Good time to experiment some plays. Absolutely. And a good stop right there by no name goalie. <laughs> like to figure out his name by the end of tonight. That would be nice. Not very realistic, however. No, probably not. It doesn't exist. <laughs> hey, could you even count this win if this, uh, if a player that was ejected was playing the whole game, Mike? I don't think so. If you think about it, right? So there is hope for the Rick Faithful. Well, I think it would count as a forfeit loss either way. Yeah, it's true. It's a loss either way. Now, you, one of your famous sayings is a tie is a glorified loss. Tie what, is a glorified loss. What do you loss. call a forfeit loss? Forfeit loss is a loss. All right, I'm sorry. What do you call a forfeit win? A loss. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Yes. But it's a win in the standings. It's a win in the standings, but not in your mind. It's all about the mental aspect. It's 80% mental, 20% physical. I think they say that about football, not hockey, however. Oh, football, that's a whole other story. Of course, hockey, it's more fighting, more fighting involved. Uh, whole different animal. Absolutely. As we see Super Bowl Sunday approach next weekend, Sunday night, 6.30, I believe. Unfortunately, it's on CBS with Jim Nance and Phil Sims. I don't know about you, I'm not a big fan of those people. Come out and support your Rhode Island College Anchorman at the, at the Quahog Cup. <laughs> There'll be four Rhode Island teams facing off against each other. Of course, your Rick Faithful will be there. I believe it's Rhode Island College, Providence College, Johnson and Wales, and Bryant, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it Brown? I believe it's Bryant. It's Bryant? Sorry to put you on the spot over there. <laughs> Couldn't remember. Drawing a blank. Should be a fun time. Those are next Saturday and Sunday. Right after we take on Sacred Heart right here at the Dennis Lynch Arena. <clears throat> Passes in front for Vadnais that is no good. And another stoppage in play. 
What we got, an icing? And Bridgewater fans clearly not happy. Looks like Saunders got in the middle of something. The fans are getting a little bit rowdy. Strong opinions of the Bridgewater State faithful. Bridgewater State's got those stands filled up pretty well. I'd have to agree. You're five on the ice for your anchorman, Vadnais. Francis. Looks like Huber. No, I apologize. That is Duffy and Saunders and Duffy. What a game. Still eight minutes to go. 10.41 p.m. Eastern. You'd be lying if I didn't say this is brutal. And Jacobs still discussing with the scorekeeper. I don't know what he is discussing. And Polak's about. going to the sin bin. I gotta use that more, the sin bin. <laughs> totally forgot about that term. Not sure what Jacobs is discussing with the scorekeeper right now. Uh, one of Lusky's issues. Well, then Lusky should be talking. Uh, to Lusky the should be talking. Lusky's blatantly incompetent over there. He shouldn't be talking to Coach Dennis Real over there. He should be <laughs> talking to the scorekeeper. You're absolutely right. And now he's going to the other bench. I'll tell you, these refs need to get their licenses renewed or just taken away forever because... Send them to the NFL. <laughs> Maybe that's where they came from. Maybe. Maybe they're the replacement refs. It's possible. It's all speculation at this point. Absolutely. Now number seven will take the face off. Along with Vatanese, it looked like. I believe so. And now it's five on three. How did it become a five on three? This is unreal. Agreed. This is unreal. And no. Just stop right there. You predict something something uh, is going to happen? You, th you think haymakers are going to be thrown in these last seven minutes? It's possible. Hey, I don't think anything's out of the question at this point. Oh, big hit right there along the glass. As number three has it, looking for the open lane. Misses wide left. And officials finally get this game under control. And I got to tell you, Matt, it's about time. Took them only, you know, two and a half periods. <laughs> Slap shot. What a rip that was. And the puck gets fired across. Still looking for something to happen. It's Bridgewater. 58 seconds left on this five on three. I apologize. McGurl comes out of the box now. The scorekeeper clearly doesn't know how to work this scoreboard because McGurl just came flying out of the box. Didn't even know how long he was in there for. This is ridiculous. Of course, your Rhode Island College anchor women and anchor men in Little East Conference matchups tomorrow at the Murray Center. Tip offs at 1 and 3 p.m., respectively, Come. against Eastern Connecticut State University. Come support your anchor men and anchor women. Your anchor women and anchor men. Thank you, Mike. Andrew Spaziano and Mike Giamarco have the call. They're excellent announcers. You should really tune in either to 90.7 WXIN or the live stream. And Pannon just got wrecked right there. Got wrecked by Huber. Still took a hit of his own, but. 
Not the first time we've seen Rhode Island College bump into other Rhode Island College players tonight. I have to agree. And the shot is stopped by Noak. With six minutes and one second left in this game. Three seconds left on the power play. But at this point, who knows if that's accurate. <laughs> We're just surprised the, the, uh, the scoreboard says period three. As Francis has a breakaway right here. Excellent deke, but it's shut down. Good pad save by no-name goalie. <laughs> Drown the second. Drown the second. <laughs> And Polak goes back to the box, along with number 24 of Bridgewater, Dill. Not sure what the calls are. I love that penalty box, yeah. Jada. <laughs> and what our microphone just picked yeah, up. Get right me there. on a slash. The slash sounds better than something else. What they, I don't know. I guess a slash is a better call at this point. And Estrella there loses the puck. Good duck there by the ref. Too bad that wasn't Lusky. May not have reacted quick enough. It would take him 20 minutes to react. Costa has the puck. Passes it to Francis. Francis could not hold it. Back up to Costa. Little dive right there by Bridgewater. And yet again, a little bit of a trip right there. He tripped Costa, but I guess the ref doesn't see that. Pass it back up. Oh, well, maybe they did see it. And now we have our third goalie in for the anchorman. Jake Martin into the game. Good to see him in. Frustration right there by Ward in the penalty box. Looks like a party there in the penalty box. That it does. Now we got four on three hockey. I apologize, it's five on three. How to become five on three so quick? Interesting. Very interesting. Well, Saunders. That's correct. Saunders battling in the corner. It's five on three for the next 46 seconds. And at this point, Rhode Island College should get one more goal of this five on three. Pass over to Costa. Excellent move right there by Costa, being patient. But it is yet again passed out. Going into next game, Anchorman, along with both coaches, got a lot of work to do. I completely agree, Mike. Seeing all three goaltenders in this game for the Anchorman tonight. And, you know, going back to uh, that Quahog tournament, uh, you know, and, hey, he buries it. Look at that. Rhode Island College gets a goal with one second left on the five-on-three, which makes it seven to two. It's a football score right there. As the goal horn sounds. And the crowd is erupting here at the Dennis Lynch Arena. Seven to the score. <laughs> McGirt will take the face off with Wild. Along with Badanez, Pano, and Duffy. <laughs> and Duffy on the ice for the anchorman.
blows the whistle. McGurl wins the face off. And Duffy's got it in the defensive zone near the far right circle. Now brings it up and passes it up to Vadanez. And he takes it away. Bridgewater with the puck, whips it down into their offensive zone. No icing on that call. Duffy has the puck. Skating up. Four men on the ice for the anchorman. F I'm sorry, five. Going for the big hit right there is Pannone. Passes it back up to Vadanez. Three minutes and 18 seconds left in the period. And the puck flies down. No icing again. Oh, it's still power play, so that makes sense. And Ward left the door open. A little disrespectful right there. <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional. Vadnais <laughs> has the puck. Pass it back up to Duffy. Duffy. Maybe even Rhode Island College makes a comeback here, Mike. You never know. You never know indeed. Pannone fires it back to Monte Santo. Fires it back in front of the net. Vadnais. But it is no good, and he loses the puck. And Duffy trying to cut down the saucer pass. And Gerhard has the puck. Toby and Gerhard. Toby Gerhard. <laughs> I was just thinking of the same thing, Mike. You never know. Two minutes, 17 seconds to go in the game. And all the young guns are out there for the Rhode Island College. Nate Duffy, Montesanto, again, both freshmen, and F Eddie Francis. We'll have a face-off near the close left dot. Francis is getting off the ice. Oh, that could have been a great opportunity right there. It could have been. Fires away. And Bridgewater just clears it out. And that's Quirk with the puck. Loses the puck. Bridgewater has it. Good stop right there. Still physical play going on right here. Showing that they're not giving up. Huber trying to get past McKinnon. Excellent opportunity and he missed the wide open net with Saunders. And they are scrumming pretty hard right there. There's Quirk and Estrella. And I think on that shot, our no name goaltender had a piece of that shot. A little bit of a scrum right there between Estrella and Bridgewater puts in another goal just to add insult to injury, making it eight to two. Good effort by Bridgewater. I would say so. One minute and 18 seconds left in this game. And it's Costa, Tugas, Pannone, Francis, and Vadnais are your five for the anchorman. Now, Mike, your coach, Real, what are you saying to your guys in the locker room at the end of this one? I mean, if it were a professional environment, I say, you step up or you're gonna get cut. But since it's not, you gotta just move on. Forget about this game, move on to the next one. And the stoppage in play right there, and the Bridgewater faithful still questioning every whistle blow. That along with, you gotta stop letting stuff get to your head. Absolutely. Have we seen Coach Dennis Real yell once from the bench? No. No. And the team has to be like that. Yeah. Fine with us. 
Face off one by Rhode Island College. Estrella trying to put one more in the net before the game ends. 35 seconds to go. Bridgewater has the puck, passes it up. And Rhode Island College trying to get the puck out of the zone. And that's Costa with the puck, but he loses an edge on the skate, loses the puck, has two men open in front of the net. I don't know why he didn't look for them earlier. And that's McGurl still showing a good effort. McGurl still has the puck. It's a good opportunity right there for Montesanto. And that will end the game here in Dennis Lynch Arena. Final score being 8-2. to two. Bridgewater State over Rhode Island College. Thanks for joining us here at Anchor TV. Matt Farino along with Mike Giamarco signing off here on Anchor TV. And join us next week, next Friday night here at 8 p.m. at the Dennis Lynch Arena. Have a good night, everybody.